Welcome to My First Hit. This is a segment every Friday where we bring some of South Africa's greatest. These are people who are icons, people who have really set the bar. They are pioneers and they've really shifted things to create what we have today. One such person is a man from the East Rand who many know as DJ Cleo, but to many others, he's pretty much everything because everything is exactly what he's done. He joins us today on My First Hit, having been one of the most prolific producers, artists, DJs that the country has ever seen. And he's been able to dabble in many other interesting things in his life. And he continues to do so. He's clad in biker wear. Cleo, good morning. Yo. Are you good? I'm very well, man. And yourself? Good, good, good. Now, uh, you are one man who understands radio etiquette. Yeah. In terms of like, you know, how to sit far from the mic, close to the mic, Everything, which buttons production. to press. So I know for a fact that while I'm running this show, you're going to be low-key critiquing everything that's going on here. Like I did the first thing I walked in here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because you were like, no, but how, why does every mic have to have a computer screen next to it? <laughs> yeah. You know? But uh, good morning to you, man. Good morning to the listeners. Thanks for having me on the show. Listen, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming. And um, I know you are in a bit of pain from last week's football game, which we'll chat about because you play football and you love the sports as well. But Cleo, you've been a part of um, South Africa's music story for yeah. many, many years. And there's been an interesting debate as to you know what your first, his, your first hit is. Because do we take it from you as a producer? Do we take it from you as an artist, as a DJ? Like, where do we begin? So... Uh, you and I had this discussion. There were a couple of things that came up. Mm -hmm. uh, but where we're going to start now, Cleo, is this song that was off Escaleni Extension 2. Uh, it's a song called Goodbye. Yeah. With DJ Wat Wat. Yes. Came out in 2005. Yeah. Is, is that the good place to start? Uh, are, you, are you happy with that? Because that's what I'm going to do now. I think you're setting the bar too high, but it's a part of my catalog, so we might as well. Okay, fine. So yeah. here it is. You know, I'm actually getting like goosebumps. No, I, I'm not kidding. Like, what do you call it? A music that do 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 do. What do you call I it? I don't know, man. <laughs> you see that do 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 do. It's like when that comes on, then you know what's going down. Huh? Go. <laughs> okay, so this is where we'll start, and when we come back, we'll talk about what was happening around Cleo's life when this song came out. Enjoy. Goodness me. DJ Cleo and DJ Wat Wat with Goodbye on 947. Of course, uh, the voice of Andrea Bocelli, the Italian tenor. W was that his original voice there? No, that's... Uh, or was uh, it a cover? No, no, uh, it's uh, Teppo, Teppo... Oh, I forgot his surname. From, from Bloemfontein. But it's a guy by the name of Teppo. Yeah, but yeah. of course, context is key to make people understand why there might be familiarity. Because there are people who are maybe too young to understand... Um, what that song meant to our dance culture in South Africa. Cleo, I had goosebumps when that song played. How did you feel when you heard that song playing now? Um, leave that. Um, how did I feel before I released it? Because I, what, what, and I had done it like a year prior. Yeah. And then I'd left it by him. Okay. And then, and then he started sending, sending an incomplete mix to DJs. And then I met Carfax at a music conference after party. Right. And Fresh is playing, my role model. Yeah. And he drops this song and people go crazy. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what? what is this? Yeah, where did he get it from? Exactly. You know, and I remember immediately I got on the phone. Like, you know, when you try and find a quiet spot in a club. Yeah. <laughs> which is nowhere. Yeah, not even in the bathroom. Yeah. You know, and I made a call to Lance from Ghetto Rough. Yeah. And I said, dude, this song is going to cause chaos. Uh, we don't have a clearance yet. Can we release it? I just needed an, an okay. Yeah. Let's go. And what did Lance say? He said, yeah, sure. I'm like, okay, <laughs> boom. <laughs> and I think it was recorded the same week. And I then rushed to finish off my album because I had the killer song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, when I do albums, I always pick from like 40 songs to pick the final 12, 15, you know? So yeah. that wasn't difficult. And this was Eskaleni uh, Extension two. 2. Yes. 
So prior to 2005. 2005. I remember I was completing my third year. So it's a very clear memory. And there was projects. Third year of the first year. (laughs) No, it was the third year of the third year. (laughs) Life wasn't complicated then. Because you know when when, when why comes into your life, things change. And that's what happened with you. You had already put out Eskaleni, the the debut of of the the series of Eskaleni projects. Um, and, and, And before that, you had a time when you started your career more or less at why what was happening in that time building up to the release of this song goodbye um my first album came out 2004 mm. and it got nominated for a sam award best dance album Whew. and at the awards i lost to level matos understandably Sort of. Is that, oh, okay. Yeah. Do you dispute that? You're like, okay, I know Lebo's hot, but I, I, I no, no. She had a hot album, but uh, for me, I was like, ufuna hanila, we category yama yama DJ, you know, because we kind of as DJs, we kind of feel like we own the best dance yes, category, you know, because so, DJs are responsible for dance yes. music. Sure. So I was like, ufuna hanila, why am I a best female? Yeah. You know, name tanga zag. Yeah. So I was very upset driving back home. Yeah. And um, I started working that very Sunday, coming back from Sun City. Wow. You know, and because I, wo- I work best, I thrive under pressure or when I'm angry. When you're upset. Yeah, when I'm upset, you know, so... That's crazy. You know, so... Plus, my first album had sold 27,000 copies, which was good back then, you know, hard copies. Would that be certified as gold? Yes. Right. Gold. Right. Um... But I was also upset with the the performance, yeah, the album, because uh, prior to releasing it, I was meant to believe that um, I'm a star, you know, I'm the best thing ever. So I was anticipating higher numbers, you know, like what revolution Yeah. at the time, who had had just hit like 200,000 units. What an era. You know, so uh, yeah, Lance uh, blew my head up a bit and... I released the album believing, you know, I'm the next best thing, you know. And Was that your first recording deal under Lance Stur? I've never actually had a recording deal. What does that mean, Cleo? You 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 came out with this project and many others. So what do you mean you've never had a recording deal? Because I've never signed as an artist to a label. So what were you signing as? We were in a partnership. So we split losses equally, we split profits equally. Okay. There's somebody who's in music now, maybe yeah. trying to get in or is in music. Under, make me understand what that what that means. So it means it, it means uh, more flavor. Walk with me. Yeah. Let's do this thing together. Right. Yeah. No uh, paperwork. How much have you got? Ah, uh, I got fifty bucks. Okay. Right. How much have you got? Answer me. Uh, right now I've got nothing on me. In my. I uh, also have nothing. <laughs> so we can't release an album. We need something. Okay, Mo. Let's go together. Yeah. Uh, let's loan money from Nondwe. Yeah. And uh, put this thing together. Yeah. If we make a hundred rands off here, I get fifty. You get fifty. Wow. However, we've loaned hundred bucks from Nondwe. If this thing does not move, we both owe Nondwe fifty fifty, uh-huh. which is a hundred. Right. Yeah. And um, but uh, get off being the record company that. As a label, you yeah. know, obviously they they had the funds, so they funded everything else I needed to do, and wow. then that means when the money comes in, they recoup their money first, and then we go fifty fifty. Okay, and so it was a JV. So was there enough money made for you to have something to share at the end of it all? Oh yeah. Oh good. Yeah, yeah. yeah good, yeah. but still no paperwork. So Tlo Munya Powell has no paperwork in agreement with Lanster anyway. No, it's just word. Trust, yeah. trust me, I got you. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's kind of like uh, how uh, <laughs> it's kind of like how Lance operates. You know, uh, he he's very loose okay. on, on paperwork. I'll, I'll come back to that in present day. Would you say that to anybody who's going to sign a deal with a label or have an understanding? Is that the way to go? Do you agree with that now? If somebody says, "Hey, Cleo, should I do this the way you did it then?" Would you say yes or no? It's difficult to say yes or no mm. because. Um, Sometimes, you know, we say knowledge is power, mm-hmm. but sometimes knowing too much can prove prohibitive to you getting a deal or to labels actually working with you because you just know too much. And you realize that, damn, they're actually going to make a lot more than what I'm going to make out of this deal. Yeah. Potentially. But, yes. But then also, you should also realize that, damn, they actually have a lot more money to invest in this project Aha. than I do. 
Okay, DJ Cleo is hanging out with uh, me today and it is his first hit. We've taken it there, but there's many other songs that he had put out before, but there's so much to be said about the moment when that song drops. I mentioned earlier that he wears many hats. So, we'll, we'll, yeah, I mean, apart from now where you've got, you know, twists going on with your hair. <laughs> but there's so many songs that you will know DJ Cleo for. We'll talk about all of them. Hanging out today on my first hit with DJ Cleo, producer, music maker, and an icon to South African music, no doubt, and beyond. We took it to where it all began, um, and we'll stay there just for a second, because yes, Eskaleni as a series started in 2004. Um, you've had record deals with uh, Lance Dove, Ghetto Rough, with no paperwork, etc. But what I'm also trying to understand, Cleo, is whether you think that the beginning of your career was an easy start or difficult start, because there's a, a narrative these days where people say, ah, oh, you know, for some, it's so easy. They just go online and their careers have begun. Yeah. Do you think yours was an easy start or difficult start when you think about how it all started with you and even just some of the moments you had in the beginning of your career? Mine was difficult, bro, because remember, we didn't have the internet. Mm. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have SoundCloud. We didn't have iTunes. We didn't have nothing. Mm. So literally, the music I had, I had to put on disc or cassette mm. and go from label to label. So if you can send 10 DMs 10 DMs in 10 minutes. Yeah. I needed to make 10 trips. Yeah. So I knew where EMI was in Steeldale. I knew BMG in Auckland Park. Uh, Get her off, Yeovil. Uh, Sony, Dunkeld. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? What's the, uh, David Gal Gresham. David yeah. Gresham. Oh, by, David Gresham. Gresham Records. Yes. yes by Marlboro. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sheer House next to David Gresham, Marlboro. Uh, and I knew how to get to all those places by taxi. Right. Yeah. And and are you telling me that you had to submit music that you had produced um, and, and had decided that you're going to send it out to all these people for them to listen what you can do? Yes. And you know, like, you know, like kids today send yeah. you links via DM. Yes. And say, this is my tune. Those who have your number will even just send you the MP3. I had to do that physically. And how many of them said yes to whatever None. you were dropping off? None. Not even Lance. <laughs> so what did it take for record industries to or record labels to recognize you and say all right no Cleo is actually a talent let's do something with him uh i had to take a detour and i got onto radio right by being on radio um ashifa shaba and then fresh gave me an opportunity to dj on this on the show on the drive show right so and you were a dj then already yes right, right. and then uh, I could also throw in one or two songs of mine. Uh -huh. And that's how TK, TS Records got to know me. Right. I understand. Um, in 2001, when he was promoting Mapapuzi, Izinja. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So, because I was now the connect on radio to play the song. Yeah. And Mischief and Mavusan, the, the DJ that could play the songs on the radio. So, as a label, you plug your song with him, yes. he's going to drop it. Yes. Wow. And right. that's how our relationship with TK developed. Mind you, Sbu worked on YFM already at the time. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And then that's how now certain musicians got to know me as the DJ on Fresh's show. I see. Yeah. So the power of association helped you a lot in really being the catalyst in helping you create a name for yourself. Yeah, no, association with DJ Fresh, association with YFM, association yeah. with his show. That's crazy. Yeah. And as a producer, because you know with some, people release songs and then they get so popular that they realize that there's a demand, then they get booked. But then you find that they either aren't performers or are not DJs. Mm -hmm. What came first for you? Were you DJing first or were you producing first? I was produce... I was de no, well, career-wise, I was yeah. producing... No, I was DJing first. So you started as a DJ before you even fiddled with uh, making music? Yeah. Yes, when who, I was 16. Who, who do we need to ask to verify? Yes, when I, when I was 16. <laughs> right. But right. remember, I, I no, I'm lying. Well, that's how scary career wise. Yeah. I started as a DJ. Right. But just me in general, yeah. I started with m playing music right. as an instrumentalist. What's the first then instrument? Then producing. What's the first instrument you played ever in your life? Do you remember? Yeah, guitar. And you still played. What was it about the guitar that stuck with you? Uh, Kiholala go the IPC church, you know, and the music is pretty much four instruments: mm. drums, bass, guitar. Uh, make it six: drums, bass, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, keyboards, 
and five. Make it five. Right. right Sorry, right. my maths has always been bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to go to. Is it Dunwiddie? <laughs> Is it Dunwiddie? Uh, Saint Francis. <laughs> Saint Francis. In Benoni. In Benoni to figure out what went wrong there. Okay. Um. So you, you started playing the guitar there. Yeah. Wow. Was it self-taught or? Yeah. Self-taught. Self-taught. Yeah. It's crazy. So, but my instrument of choice was bass guitar. So, mm. uh, it was guitar first, but then I moved to bass. And it stayed with you because even in your music, your bass is you can tell. Yeah. yeah no. Bass is my thing. It's actually. Sure my achilles you know because uh, i always have to check if i haven't put too much bass aha uh -huh. or too many notes or is it not too loud because you just go ham yeah i know it's my thing <laughs> so it's it's, it's, it's it's like julius malema and Sipedi, you know <laughs> uh, inseparable <laughs> so much so that he even speaks english Spade, you know don't do that yeah inseparable yeah. <laughs> <laughs> country exactly it was a counter tree yeah, it's fascinating because, you know, everybody has a journey. So as a producer, I want to go back to this song quickly. This is a song with Mzege Zege. One of the biggest songs in the world of Kwaito. And of course, the late Brown Dash is also on the song. Yeah. How did this come about for you to work on a song with Mzege Zege, who started as a radio gimmick and became one of the most, you know, historic musical acts we've ever seen to date i had to beg the guys to produce the song because uh it was initially produced by d-rex oh yeah and d-rex was quite the producer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know. sure sure um and they played it on a a couple of times and it didn't catch fire and i kept begging tk dude let me do the song because quite was my thing yeah. let me do the song right and out of the blue one day he just gave me a call and he said listen dude uh do you want to give it a shot um I'll fetch you tomorrow at nine. No, I'll I'll come pick it up at nine in the morning. And I passed out trying to make it. And then I woke up with two hours to deadline. And like I said, I thrive under pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I then did the speed. And then we took it to Sunning Hill to Mendoza's label. Oh. And Von Eaton at the time said, ah, the beat is week what 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 you guys go upstairs and see what you can do so when we got upstairs we decided no the beat is fine we are just recording vocals because we didn't have a studio right right so right, we right. get into the booth all four of us yeah uh myself gilly brown dash and the masked man uh, who's this is this uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> your network is breaking <laughs> Okay. Who are you to you? <laughs> and was the mask on? <laughs> no, it was very off. So, 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 I guess I got to perform or records music in the studio with the mask on, off, off. off. Yeah. Right. And that's how the song pretty much came about. You know, I took the voice. I mm. even had a verse in the song, which I then muted later. Why? I, my confidence was low, low, low. So low, there low. is a DJ Cleo verse in Kutkanga Matolo yes. by Mzege Zege. Yes. That is, is it, is it saved somewhere? No, I have everything. So have you ever thought of putting I, it on? Forget. Really? Forget. So it's not going to cut it? Forget. Were you singing or rapping? What were you doing there? Yeah, uh, sort of. <laughs> somewhere in the, in the middle. I'm trying to figure it out. Somewhere there below the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, before I get into other stuff, um, I want to talk about your impression of your music career in terms of success. I mean, you, you look at songs like Facebook, for example. Don't take my number. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many awards did the song win? Wasn't it like two, three years in a row where it won like a summer? No, that was Hands Up. Oh, that was Hands Up? Yeah. Oh, oh so what, it was this song? Yeah, so this one won six summers. Whew. Facebook won three. I mean, there was a time when the digital space in terms of music downloads were starting to be a thing in South Africa, but you yeah. were like right there at the forefront in terms of a successful artist when it comes to people downloading their music. Yeah. Uh, five years in a row. Um, so I have 15 summers and 13 of them is just downloads. That's crazy. <laughs> what was it? It's, it's listening when you're being told. Uh -huh. And because that's how I've learned everything I know. Mm. But most importantly, uh, just making music that people want, whether they buy it, pirate it, copy it, share it. Uh, nobody copies what they don't like. So make music that people will like and want. That's beautiful. Speaking of that, Cleo, musically now, with everything going on, I'm a piano being a thing. I mean, you still, you know, dabble even with that yeah. to this day. Where are you musically? What 
do you think we want from you now? Do you know what people want from Clio right now? People don't know what they want. People know what they've been given before. Mm. Yes, hence we have the word tastemakers. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's always a gamble. Right. You know, so, um, but for me, I'm chasing that elusive Grammy and I'm done with school now. So now I've got time to... Yes, yes, yes. To work yes. proper. Yes, you graduated in, recently. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got time to put in the work mm. and I've been working, man. I've been working and... Um, Dude, I'm chasing the Grammy, but I'm also just fighting hard to 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 put the DJ Cleo brand on a higher platform than before. Right. Yeah. And it's gonna take a lot of work, but it's I'm putting in the work. Does that mean uh, global? Does that mean traveling more in you know regions like Europe and the US where yes. there seems to be a vibe with our music? Yes. Yeah. Traveling again, you know? Because you, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, at, you've done it. Yeah, I've yeah. done it all, and um, I still enjoy traveling now. Um, like I did uh, 20 years ago, right. you know, and, and gigging, you mm. know, so even though some, some of the things don't change in, you know, in the, in the gig space, you know, you still get those stages without the white lines and <laughs> that's how you find people falling off. <laughs> so you, you've got your, your, your strict sort of spec, specs or specifications when you go and perform. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also looking to, to, to blow up the next big thing in SA. Um, and the next big thing in Africa and hopefully also the next big thing in the world. Well, you've done it before, you can do it again. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Um, outside of music, you dabbled in football. Yeah. There's a, a hilarious picture on your Instagram that you posted four days ago. Yeah. Go to DJ Cleo's Instagram, DJ Cleo one There's a picture there, his recent pic. He posts there, at Itumelem Kune, I need you, bro. Tell these people that these upside down situations are normal, especially <laughs> against the quality of the football, former footballer, Junior Kanye. You're a goalkeeper in this picture. Yeah. Your feet are in the air. Your back is on the ground. You're basically snapping your neck and there's Junior running off after scoring a goal. Yeah. Is this a summary of your football career, Cleo? Absol what's happening? Absolutely normal. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely normal. You know, um, yeah. You know, obviously, I'm very passionate about the position, and I. Yeah. It hurts me sometimes when I see people uh, chastise uh, greats like Bokune and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When cameramen catch them upside down or in a sure. funny position, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is part of football, you yeah. know. And um, obviously, people don't understand, especially social media people. You know, they're yeah. very quick to ridicule. But um, yeah, look, uh, the the soccer thing, I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, would I do it again? Definitely. Because you still play anyway socially, which yes, is good. Yes, you yeah. Know, I, I got as far as getting offered a contract, you know, it's just that it was at a beginner's salary and there's no way I was gonna maintain my lifestyle. Yeah, no, not not a DJ Cleo lifestyle with the nah. chicks you've had in your life. You you're a biker, in fact you are you're biker clad now in terms yeah, of your, yeah. your jacket, etc. Yeah. Um which 16, is, sixteen years. You've been riding for sixteen years. Yeah. Uh tell me, does your bike have a name? Not really. Okay, what what bike is it's, it? I have two. They're both big and black. Right. So you've got, yeah, so you got two cruisers. No, no, no. It's a super cruiser bikes. and a super bike. Oh, yeah. beautiful. But um, they, they, they're big and black and they, they like to be ridden. <laughs> <laughs> and once you go black, ay, 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 ay. you don't go black, brother. With red rims, by the way. <laughs> Are you part of a, a club? Yes, the Escalini Motorcycle Charity Club. Right. And um, yeah, man, it's fun times. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So, are you riding soon again? Anyway, I, I rode here. Yeah, I'm riding home. <laughs> you know, I just just need to avoid the taxis. Yeah, I totally agree with you, <laughs> Cleo. Um, it's been a marvel to be in your presence. Um, you were in the industry long before we were. We looked up to you. We still do. Thank you so much for sharing the best of you, and uh, we appreciate you joining us to go down memory lane and just to tell us uh, where your life is at right now. We're out of time. And thanks for inviting me, man. It's my first time in the 94.7 studios. Yeah. In 23 years in the music industry. So this is the first time yeah. you come to 947 ever. Yeah. And it took me. Yep. I, I know. I, I deserve a raise. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Cleo is on Instagram. DJ Cleo one Find him online and everywhere else. And uh, that was my first hit today with DJ Cleo. Thank you, bro. Both Flavor on 947.